Right, ladies and gentlemen, I have today got this here. It's a Peugeot Expert, but it's the same if you've got a Peugeot Expert, a Citroen Dispatch, um, Citroen Jumpy, Relay. Uh, or for that matter, if you happen to have a Mark IV Ford Mondeo, uh, S-Max, uh, it's all the same engine. Um, this engine is 2 litre diesel. Uh, we've got 250,000 miles on the clock and we are doing an oil pressure test um, so we are warming up so obviously as you can see there we've still got 1.7 1.8 bar of pressure um, at idle now the specification auto data gives me for this specific van is it should be 4.8 bar at uh, 4,000 RPM. Now, if you didn't know, these have a, not all of them, but most of the ones I've seen have a variable displacement oil pump. Um, as you can see, we've got a few miles on this one. Um, now, interestingly, uh, this was bought to me after it had an oil pressure switch somewhere, um, and they put the oil pressure switch in, and just said it was a bad oil pressure switch, but it's already had an oil pressure switch in it. Um, which is why I find that a little bit suspicious, to be honest. Uh, because when you've already had an oil pressure switch, and then you've put another one in a couple of months later, it seems a little bit interesting. Now, we are, as you can see, warming up, because obviously doing an oil pressure test is pretty pointless uh, I mean doing it cold idle everything's got lots of oil pressure even if it's complete junk it's got oil pressure um, so we're letting this warm up now um, obviously by the time you mess around they're not too bad if you just take the bottom boost hose off you can get in there and, and get it on what I do find interesting though is we have no oil pressure switch plugged in yet the oil pressure light is off so that's a little bit strange to me because we should have an oil pressure light right now because the engine's running and we haven't so do we have a grounded circuit um it's possible that's the reason we could have had the oil pressure lights because we've got a bad circuit um the oil light does work um when you turn the engine off it it is there so we do have an oil light now, like I say, we're letting this come up to temperature because we want the engine at operating temperature because that's when the oil's theoretically its thinnest. It's weird how that light looks like it's flickering on the camera, but <laughs> in real life, you can't actually see that flickering at all. Strange. Um, so, come back out here. And... Like I say, we are at idle. So, we're going to be up around there. Now, like I say, when it was cold, um, it actually had about 5.2 bar at about 2,000 RPM. So, that was plenty of pressure, but like I say, there's no point in testing a cold engine. So, we're going to let it warm up and see what happens to the oil pressure. So I will mention, if you're not sure if this has, a, if you've got one of these engines, if it's got the variable displacement pump, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see, uh, but down on the bottom end, because the oil pump is actually on the crank, on the end of the crank on this, um, and the, basically there'll be an electrical connector on, on something that looks like the oil pump um, if you've got that electrical inclinator then that means you have the variable displacement pump we are still warming up but I thought I'd show you so it is coming up now and as you can see that oil pressure has dropped a little bit more but we are still over a bar so I'm not too concerned so we've got a pedal depressor in there
so that's 2000 ish so we can see at 2000 we're actually over just over spec we're not completely warmed up yet so we will leave that a second pressures uh, pressure <laughs> yeah put my teeth back in uh, temperature there look we are now creeping up at uh, 2000 rpm we're now almost at operating temperature so the thermostat should open soon um, which means we'll be good to do our actual test so we have dropped a tiny bit but we are about 4.8 bar at 2000 so that's good and this is what i mean now we are actually coming up towards full operating temperature that is actually dropping off and this is why you can only do this test at operating temperature we're going to take a look at the uh, dash there you go you can see we're we're coming up now we're still not there but we are at 2000 like i say the, the test's at 4000 which seems awfully high to me i'm trying to find a way of putting a gauge so that i can see it through the windscreen but of course it just rolls back and wants to sit itself in a position where it's awkward to see and get to but let's check and see if the thermostat's opened fizzy cab not yet like I say doing this test at any other point would be pointless because as you can see we're actually now down towards four. We are getting there. Right, that hose is now starting to warm up, which means the thermostat's now happy, the engine's warm enough. So we are now actually co actively cooling the engine. You see we are four bar pulsing a lot less now as well yep yeah, to be fair that's around about where these sit is between the two marks there um, I mean it may come up slightly higher under heavy loads but we are about at the now so let's raise that up a little bit Three thousand. We're back over the five, which is over the four point eight, so I'm happy with that. And we'll let it come back down to an idle. Right, so that was over five. As you could see, we was only at three thousand RPM, um, and the spec is four point eight bar at four thousand. So we're definitely within that. And like I say, it is a variable displacement pump, so. Uh, between certain RPMs the pressure will stay the same because it will regulate its own oil pressure so I just don't particularly like the idea of revving an engine to 4000 RPM I mean this is it's a diesel it's 4000 RPM is the absolute maximum you would ever rev this to so as we can see there we are focus there we go we are still just over a bar at idle which a bar of oil pressure at idle I'm happy with that um, sort of 30 psi oh yeah that, that that hose is lovely and warm now yeah yeah rad's up ready to burn my fingers when I try and take the uh, oil pressure gauge out down there so we'll just show you. So to test this, I just used my US Pro oil pressure testing kit. They're not expensive. Uh, so the pressure gauge is slotted in there. So that's where the pressure switch goes. It's the easiest place to get into. Um, I removed this, that hose 
just makes getting in there a little bit easier to thread that in. Uh, but no, I'm happy with that. Um, the oil pressure seems fine. So manually the gauge says that the oil pressure is fine. The thing that does concern me slightly is the oil pressure switch. Um, there's no oil pressure light. I mean, it's unplugged. It's, it should have an oil pressure light on. I haven't accidentally earthed it on something, have I, so that it's not on? Yeah, it's warm under here now. Oil level switch there. Tell this. Didn't put that back in properly because I know I'll be taking it back out to get my gauge back. So, as we can see, that is the electrical connector. So the oil pressure switch. So let's now just to start it. No boosters on, so it won't be very happy, but it should idle fine. There's only the boost on these engines isn't that high, even though they're turbo diesel, they're not very high pressure. But I'll show you what I mean because the light does come on with the ignition and then goes straight off. which I do find a little bit strange. Which is almost like, have we got a cluster fault? Or a wiring fault? So, come in here. All in one take, so you can see it. There's the oil pressure light, look. Someone give me a clue why that's not on. Bit more investigation into that side of it, I think. But there you go. All pressure test done. Thanks for watching. Catch you with the next one. Maybe it'll be about the uh, little light under there.